hello again. So I changed things up a little bit. I put a number in front of x. Now, depending if there's a number uh, that you're adding or subtracting inside the absolute value, it can make a difference. In this case, it makes a, a stark difference. In this one, it's a little different. So the vertex is still the same. The vertex is the bottom of the graph. It's, you know, it's uh, up or down, but it, it's the lowest or the highest point of an absolute value graph, which looks like a V. So if I substitute in my values, and I already came up with my table, and I'll show you how I did it. There is no number afterwards, so it's you know, 0 divided by the number in front of x, which is 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. That's my middle point. This one is the absolute, excuse me, opposite value divided by the number in front of x. So it's 2 divided by 2, which is 1. That's how I got my middle point. And it really does work. And this one is negative 1 divided by the number in front of x, which is, uh, I'm sorry, negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So when I substitute in my values, and you can go ahead and do this yourself. That's what you get for the first one. And for the next one, when you uh, substitute them in, you get 0, and then you get 2, and 2, 6, and that's 4, and that's 4, 2. Yeah. And when you substitute in this one, it's 0, and 2, and 4, and you substitute in negative 2. I know it's 2, and I know the next one's 4, but I'm just waiting. There's actually a reason why I know that. Because the absolute value graph will go up the same in both directions. So I know once I find my vertex or my high or my low point on the graph, that I already know what the values are, the respective values on each corresponding side will be. So I'm going to graph the first one first, absolute value of 2x. And it actually rises up quicker. Putting a number in front of the x makes it rise up quicker than it would have otherwise. We'll put that one in brown. And that's my base that I'm working with for this particular problem. My vertex is that point right there where the two lines connect. That's pretty much all that I was talking about when I talked about my vertex. You can have an absolute value that goes the other way, which we will be working on momentarily. Uh, I've got two more lessons on the absolute value because I think it's important and I think it's neglected. Next one. looks like this. And the last one shifts. So basically when you're messing around inside the absolute value, it shifts it. Uh, putting a number in front of x will make it go higher faster, uh, depending if it's a higher number. If it's a lower number, then it will go lower, but uh, that's something else altogether. So, like I said, whenever you're shifting inside, I think it was a two-part lesson needed for that, you consider this. Uh, this isn't going to shift at all because there's no number that you're adding or subtracting after the x. But because you put a 2 in front of it, it's going to raise higher than it did in the previous example, just the absolute value of x. This one's going to shift the opposite of this value divided by the number in front of x, so it shifts 1, and it shifts 1 to the right, and this one's going to shift 1 to the left, because we're not actually, you see, some people are going to say, well, isn't it 2? No, because it, we're taking the opposite, val opposite value and dividing by the number in front of x. So this one only shifts 1 to the left, which is actually pretty interesting in its own right. But the 2 in front of the x raises it up. So we're doing two things at once. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when you add a value here, and then if you just put a negative there. With that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.